What's going on guys? Sean Gutierrez back with another video. Guys, this is Q&A number three. Let's get to it. Right, guys so like i said this is q a number three uh you guys have been liking these q a's i get lots of responses for this like i said before guys if you don't have your post notifications turn on go hit that bell in the corner turn on your notifications and that will let you guys know when i drop my posts that are going to tell you to send me your haircuts for my the feedback videos or to send in questions for a q a that way you guys will know right away uh you guys can send that stuff in and also when i drop my videos it's going to pop up and tell you guys that i just dropped and you guys can be uh, the first to click over and watch those videos. So anyways, guys, let's get right into the q and got a lot of questions. Some of these have been kind of repeat questions, so I'm going to touch on a lot of these pretty quickly, and I'll let you know if there's more answer to that question that you need to go check out a previous Q&A. So let's get into it. All right, guys, first question. Sorry if I'm late on this, but if I'm going from the Oster speed line fast speed, what cordless clipper would be the smoothest transition? You know, that's funny. I just did the Run Barber podcast the other day. I don't know if any of you guys listened to that. Uh, if you didn't, go check out Run Barber uh, Zero Gap podcast. They had me on. Uh, we talked about the fast feed. We talked about how uh, Oster's really dropping the ball on not doing a cordless fast feed or really any improvements at all. You know, they still have their same old clippers. Um, and they actually informed me that in the UK, they're going to drop a corded fast feed finally. So here cordless clippers have been going on for two, three years. Uh, and Ulster is their next move is to put a corded clipper in the UK instead of making a cordless. So I'll be honest, I've never liked the fast speeds or the speed lines. Um, funny enough, fast speed is in the name. Uh, they feel like they run really slow for me. So uh, I can't really tell you what would compare. I do know they're really good at cutting bulk. So I guess what I would tell you is uh, the Gold FX from Babelis, something, uh, one of those clippers would probably be your best thing that's gonna cut you know, bulk similar to the fast feed. Uh, really, they're a very unique clipper though. I don't really think there's a perfect transition from that clipper, but I would recommend the Gold FX or a Wall Senior is my favorite as you guys know, but there's really no clipper like the fast feed other than just the regular corded fast feed. All right, next up, can you work in a barber shop while in barber school? Uh, all I can speak for on that question is in Kentucky where I'm at and you are not allowed to work in a barber shop, uh, you're not allowed to cut hair at all outside of school and as a student you have to cut within a licensed school under supervision um, so that's in kentucky i'm not sure about elsewhere i know there are some states that do some type of apprenticeship uh, so you'll have to just see what the state that you're in what that looks like i wish i could have done some work in a barber shop while i was in school but what i would tell you is even if you can go just shadow and hang out sweep hair uh, help the barbers out at a shop and take in all the knowledge there that would help even if you're not technically working all right, next question. If you weren't a barber, what would your dream job be and why? Thanks for all the great nuggets and fire videos you've been dropping on. Appreciate that, Jason. Uh, I'm trying to bring some content out, guys. Uh, it's really tough right now, but these are fun. I like answering guys' questions. Uh, if I wasn't a barber, guys, before I became a barber, I was in the restaurant industry. Uh, just something I was always good at. I, th I think I could really do anything that I can do with my hands. So uh, cooking and doing stuff like that, I always enjoyed. Uh, I always thought that I would open my own restaurant. So where I'm at in Kentucky, guys, there's not a lot of like local hole in the wall, cool spots. It's all corporate, uh, you know, places like you guys have elsewhere. So I always thought I would open a real cool, unique restaurant. Of course I switched careers and that never happened. I also have always been into working on cars. And, and when I was in that time, if somebody asked me, you know, if you hit the lottery, what would you do tomorrow? Uh, I said, I would probably open a shop, have a few cars. Uh, if you guys watch TJ Hunt uh, on YouTube, I'm not sure if you guys know who he is, but he's got a big garage with seven, eight, nine cars. Uh, his friends can come work there. His YouTube pays for him to uh, work on cars and stuff. You know, I don't know. I like cutting hair. Uh, if, if I was rich and could do whatever I wanted, I would still probably cut some hair. I would have multiple cars and do things like that. Um, but those are my interests. Probably something to do with cars, something to do with maybe opening a, a cool restaurant and just you know making it unique and having something that was unique, similar to my barbershop, but in a different uh, industry. So, Next question. What do you do if you're about to graduate barber school and you haven't found a shop that fits you? I want to avoid trying out shops and seeing if I like it. I want to find a shop, just know it's the one for me, rather, rather than going from shop to shop, seeing if it's for me or not. What can I do? 
You know, that's a tough question. I don't know what your area looks like, how many shops there are. You know, I was fortunate to start in a good shop that was a pretty good fit for me, but really I opened my own shop because uh, the shop I started at was, you know, holding me back from growing beyond where I was. Uh, what I would tell you is just go around and talk to people. I think uh, just, you know, from me doing what I'm doing now on YouTube, I get messages and people ask me like, man, you, you just understand what I'm what I'm going through, how I want to grow myself in this industry, uh, the goals that I have. You sound like you had. So I, I feel like if you find the right shop, that you're gonna you're gonna hit that off with the owner right there. So if you came into my shop and you're talking about where you wanted to take it and what what you want to learn and and how you want to cut, I'm gonna be right there with you. Oh yeah, man, you know I've done that or I I, I like that clipper or. You can do this, you can do that. You know, you're gonna feel right away whether that owner is gonna look out for you to grow or if they're just, you know, nonchalant. Yeah, this is how we do it. If you wanna do it, this is how we do it. Come in, work, these are the hours. Uh, you know, you're gonna feel a vibe from that person. So I would just go around and pick some brains and really see if you get that vibe from somebody. Uh, and you know, it may not be there. I got a good friend in Canada that's working at a shop that really doesn't push him and he's really struggling. Wants to open his own, but it's, it's just a tough scenario. So I would say you find the best place that you can grow, whether that means that the owner and the other barbers are doing it or not. As long as you can grow, learn and get where you want, you know, you can find opportunity later. You just really need to get going and get learning. So make sure you have a spot that you can really grow and learn and practice and get better without being held back. And then you can figure out the rest later. So that would be my answer to that. Next one, what's your advice on building a clientele? Uh, I've touched on this before. Uh, I have another question as well that I'm just going to send you to my last Q&A, but definitely go check out my last Q&A if you want some more advice on this. The number one thing, guys, make sure people know what you do. Everywhere I go, everybody knows I'm a barber. My car has my shop logo on it. Guys, I'm wearing 245 or a clutch every day. I got a barber, a clipper on my neck, a razor on my head. You know, that's, that's my way of doing it. You guys find your own way. Make sure when you go out, every person that you know knows you cut hair and, and hopefully when they need a haircut, they'll come to you. And then the next thing, if they come and you're not at the shop, you lost that person. So you talk to them 10, 15 times. Every time you see them, come see me, come see me, come see me. They show up at the shop. You're not at the shop. You may never get the chance again. So number one, make sure you got people that know what you do so they can, they can come to you when they need you. And then number two, if you wanna be successful, make sure you're there. If you're there, open to close every day, take every walk in that walks in, let them know you care about what you're doing and you care about them and you wanna give them the best service, you'll have no problem. Next question, how much should I charge for color chemical services? Social media tips. Uh, color chemical services, I don't do a lot of color, uh, so I can't really touch on that. Uh, you guys see I went to blue this time, I like it, it's kind of a bluey silver. I don't do color though in the shop. So you have to kind of look elsewhere for that. Color enhancement I do, if it's just a little hairline work or whatever, maybe five bucks. If it's hair and beard and all over, then I'm gonna charge 10. And social media tips, guys, I just watched David Fowler's video on this just to see what he had to say. Guys, go check him out if you haven't. David Fowler on YouTube, guys, he's got lots of content, one of my homies. But the, the biggest thing on social media, stay consistent, guys. I've posted a video every week since I started YouTube. Once I started doing two a week, I post two a week. And I'll be honest, my Instagram has slacked since I've been doing YouTube. So really, my Instagram slowed down, my YouTube is sped up. But the best thing you can do is stay consistent, not only with your time, but with the quality, uh, with the look of your content. You know, all my videos are similar, good quality, the thumbnails look similar. You guys can see my stuff and know that it's mine. That's the most powerful thing you can do and stay on it. You know, Instagram, you need to post like once a day. Now, right now I'm not doing that. I don't have any content. We need to be posting frequently. YouTube, if you say you're gonna post once a month, post once a month. If you're gonna post every other week, post every other week. Uh, but stay consistent with the quality, with the uh, consistency of how often you post. Uh, and that should help you grow. You know, you just gotta keep putting yourself out there. All right, next up. Just got some cordless seniors. I'm thinking about getting the Eco battery. Have you seen any improvements in the battery life? How are you feeling about shops opening up on the 25th? Uh, so the battery, guys, I haven't used it yet. I did cut my own hair yesterday, uh, just a little taper. Uh, well, I cut, I cut a lot of hair, but I used the walls for the taper. I did like them, they felt good. Uh, and even the blade sound was a little bit different. You guys know the babelists, we can hear the <laughs> as you're cutting, uh, and the walls don't really do that. So I, I did think they sounded good. You guys will have to wait. As soon as I get back, first video, we're gonna talk about how they were uh, and, and how I liked them. Uh, and how I feel about opening up shops on the 25th. Guys, I'm not gonna get into this whole thing. I'm ready to get back to work. Uh, if we're being honest right now, I feel like 
we're being a little bit misled on the truth about what all this is and, and, and what's going on. Uh, and I'm ready to get back. I think that uh, I've had enough of my life being put on hold. If it's about safety, then, then I think things would be going a lot different. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but things like Disney World or you know, Walmart, Lowe's, restaurants are gonna be 50% capacity. I'm a barber, I'm trained in sanitation. I already wore gloves, I already cleaned my tools. I'll wear a mask, I'll do whatever I gotta do, let me get back to work. So I am absolutely ready. We have all of our stuff set up to get back to work and we're ready to get back to it. Next question, where can I order a personalized Babyliss Pro? So you can't order those yet. I'm not sure if Babyliss is gonna offer that ever. Um, as of right now, it's only at the hair shows. And as far as I know, guys, they're supposed to be at the CT Barber Expo in July. Um, so you guys stay tuned for that. Follow Babyliss and they've been posting quite a bit on what shows they'll be at and uh, where you guys can get the custom effects. But as far as I know, they are only at the hair show. So hopefully they'll put them online and you guys can get some. I've, I've got a lot of questions about that. All right, next question. Biggest hurdles opening your shop? Uh, you know, I was fortunate. I don't feel like I had a lot of hurdles opening my shop. Uh, it was just things that you had to go do, you know? I had to go tear some walls down. So I watched some videos, asked some people, I went and did it. Maybe I didn't know something about something, you know, reach out to some friends, watch some videos, figure it out. Money obviously is a big hurdle. So uh, if you guys watch my video on Open a Shop, I had a personal friend that is pretty well off that helped me out. So that would have been a hurdle, I guess, uh, having to go to a bank with a business plan and get a loan. But really, I, it was just time, I guess, which I was fortunate to have four months to do the work. Uh, so going back, let's say I just didn't have the money, didn't have a, a friend like that, and had a month to open my shop, then really time and money would be the problem, which is the problem with everything, right? So go to the bank, get your loan, get your butt in there and get the work done. That's gonna be the toughest part. So just figuring it all out, guys. I got a friend right now in Canada that I'm, I'm helping talk through opening his own shop. Uh, and that's the problem, just making decisions, figuring out what's the best. When you have all these options, what's the best way? Uh, you just gotta make decisions, stick with it, and, and just get to it. So, ain't nothing to it but to do it. That's one of my favorite lines. Uh, that's the thing, guys, just, just make a decision, uh, have a goal in mind of what you wanna accomplish, uh, and just go after it. All right, next question. Guards or clipper over comb? You guys, Trey, you should know the answer to that by now um, from watching my videos. You guys know that I prefer to use guards and clipper over comb. And prime example, guys, I cut my own hair yesterday. I didn't wanna take too much weight off so what I did was combed it to the side. I took a four guard, and I went straight through it. You guys can see I have some weight. If I was to try to clipper over comb that, definitely on myself, I'm gonna cut a lot of that out and I'm gonna end up with this mohawk shape like this. So I like to have some weight here so I keep this fullness. Uh, so I took a, a four guard straight up into it uh, and that way I was able to save the weight. So that's how I do it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that's how I do it. All right, next question. And this is a important question for the time that we're in right now, guys. Can a barber live a high maintenance life? The answer to that is yes. Is that smart? Possibly no. Uh, I'll tell you guys, you know, I have, I have a lot of nice things. Uh, that's why I work so hard. That's why I work so many hours and cut so many heads and try to stay full. And, and I'm doing YouTube and I'm selling my products, you know, cause I want to have nice things. Now, luckily for me, I had just been in the position to start saving some money, having my side hustle selling my color cards to have some income coming in right now. But I'll tell you what, had I not had those things, my high maintenance life would have put me in a hurting right now, being out of work. So can a barber live a high maintenance life? I think so. Of course we make good money, so. But I will say that that maybe isn't the smartest decision. You know, you wanna make sure for every thousand bucks you're going out and blowing, that you're putting a thousand bucks back in saving. So I try to do it 50-50, that's my goal from now on, is to save or invest or do something with half of my money and take the rest and you know live on that not live, you know once you get things you don't need more um, but but you know I, I like to have nice things I like to eat well I like to take care of tip tip people when I'm out if I order something if I you know I like to take care of people uh, honestly I'm very generous um, I've become very generous but I'll tell you what guys the more I I put that out the more it comes back so just be careful with that you know if you guys spend too much money uh, in this pandemic and you guys are broke and unemployment isn't coming in and obviously that high maintenance life You know, you can't sell that flat screen TV or that car fast enough to get that money back to take care of the things You have to take care of so as long as you have a little bit of balance there I don't think it's a problem for you to work hard as a barber make a nice living and have some nice things You guys know I drive a BMW. That's one of my favorite things to have is a, a nice car that makes me feel like I'm working for something But yeah guys be smart about it and uh, you guys will be alright. So next 
How can barbers and stylists save money for times like these where they can't cut hair for months but still can pay their bills and keep their shop paid without waiting for help with the government? So perfect question to follow up, guys. If, if you were to put 50% back, 50% towards bills and whatever you got to do, uh, you'd be a lot better off during this time. And guys, I'm gonna tell you my number one tip for saving money. And this, I'm gonna tell you guys, I saved up and I bought my fiance's engagement ring in about two months time with this technique. Guys, every day, first 20 bucks. And if you charge more, if you charge 30 and you wanna do the price of your first haircut, then do that. But make a spot at your shop, if it's a lockbox, a bag, whatever you wanna do, in your car, wherever you feel safe, first haircut every day, put it up. Put it in a drawer, lock it away, do not touch it. Guys, I did that for two months. What I did even beyond that, guys, was I did 20 bucks every day. When I got home, took my money out of my wallet, I put 20 to the side, I put the rest over here in my where I keep my money, uh, and the 20 added up. What I did beyond that was for every $100 that I made, I put 20 more. So 20 regardless. If I made 100, I was putting 40. If I made 200, I was putting 60. 380, if I hit 400 bucks, I was putting $100 back that day. And I tell you guys, I bought her engagement ring in two and a half months on just doing that every day. So if you guys want it simple, do that every day. Take your first haircut and put it up. And you guys, you know, if you work a few hundred days a year and put $20 up a day, that's a significant chunk of change you guys can have and you won't even miss it. So. That's what I would tell you guys to do. That's my technique. And that's as soon as we get back to work, I'm going hard at that. I'm trying to get some savings going. I'm trying to get some investments going. Uh, so that's definitely what I would tell you guys. Next question, what's your best way to get your name out in the industry and promote yourself? I already touched on that, guys. Make sure everybody knows you're a barber. Get some nice business cards. Ask places. You go to a gas station every morning, the same one. Guys, I'm good friends with multiple gas station owners in town. Because I stop frequently, I just make conversation. Hey man, can I throw a stack of cards down here on the front? by the register, most of the time they're gonna say yes, especially if you became friends with them. Different places like that, throw them out. Uh, make sure everybody knows you're a barber, I've already touched on that. Post frequently on Instagram, post on Facebook, just make sure that it's known that you're a barber uh, and you guys should have no problem. Next question, how much of your income comes from selling product? Is it worth investing to have a large product selection at your shop? Guys, I'll be honest, I don't sell products worth a lick. And I'll tell you guys why, partially. Uh, I started out as an elegance verified retailer. I'm not sure what they call it, partner. And I'll be honest, guys, over time, as I got in involved with 245, I really began to like the, the idea of, of how 245 operates, okay? It's not, uh, let me throw my logo on something and put it out and we can make money on it, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy capes and put a logo on it. I'm gonna buy combs and put a logo on it. I'm gonna buy spray bottles and mirrors and, and uh, not to knock elegance, they're making big money. But that's what they did, really. They, they bought everything they could, put their logo on it, and uh, threw it out. And what I noticed was a lot of the products, there was only about one product that I really liked that I could stand behind. So I slowly stopped selling Elegance products. I started to sell 245 products, and guys, unfortunately, because of the way the business is set up and how many different things they have their hand in, the products from 245 have stopped for now. So guys, I'll be honest, I have just stopped selling products. Of course, right now I'm not working, but absolutely, product is an easy way to sell it. Uh, it does take some time to post, hey, here's our products, here's our prices. Uh, remind people to pick it up. Every every client that you cut, hey, do you need some product today? That's an easy way to make an additional 10 bucks on every client if you want to. But I'll be honest, I don't do enough of it, but it is, it's like free money. Uh, but again, your question, is it worth investing to have a large selection? If you don't have a lot of money, it's hard to drop, you know, the elegant setup cost me a thousand dollars up front to get a shelf full of stuff. So if you can't do that, that's tough. I would recommend having something for your clients, really tailored to the, the styles that you feel like you're cutting. Maybe a pomade, maybe a clay, definitely some beard oil if you do a lot of beards. And that's, all, that's basically free money. They're going to be looking for that product anyways. And if you can provide it for them, then you're going to be better off. What's your advice on keeping new clients coming back, like walk-ins? Guys, you got to sell yourself, right? You got to be confident. Make them feel confident on their haircut. Definitely just, just really uh, gas them up, guys. You don't have to BS them, but gas them up. Make them feel good, that's what we do. Make them feel good, make them feel confident. Make them know that you're confident. Hey man, I'm gonna take care of you today. I understand what you want. I got you, man. Hey, come back and see me, I'll take care of you. If you have a couple friends, send them in. I'd love to take care of them. We appreciate you coming in. That goes a long way, guys. A lot of times you say, here, 20 bucks. All right, thanks, see ya. And they leave, why would they come back? So make them feel like it was an experience. Make them remember your name. Hey man, send some friends in, come back. I'd love to see you again. Uh, here's how we book appointments, man. Let me know, I'd love for you to come back. Uh, just really 
really make them feel comfortable. A lot of people are looking for a spot um, that, that makes them feel good. And a lot of people, you guys underestimate this, but to a lot of people, their barber is one of their closest friends that maybe their only friends. So if you can make people feel good and, and like they have somebody that they can count on and trust, then they're gonna come back to you. Can you speak on young teenage barbers and what to expect as time goes on and what to expect your first year out of barber school? Uh, yeah, what to expect the first year out of school? I got a funny memory from middle school choir and I never sang again after this, but my teacher used to have on top of her piano, y'all go with me. You only get out what you put in. And that's a prime example. First year barber, you only get out what you put in. You're gonna take this as far as you want. The more work you put in, the more you're gonna get out. So that's all I can really tell you. Find a good shop, put the work in, put your name out there, try to get better. Really, really put work in on yourself and you guys should thrive and have no problem. If you just show up, you show up late, you leave early, you're not trying to learn anything, you're gonna get what you're putting in. So. Really, that's what I like about this industry. You can be young, old, being a teenager, teenager doesn't have anything to do with it. If you come out and you're grinding, you're trying hard, you're learning, you're skilled, you can communicate that to your clients, you'll be successful. If you're older like me and you just started, same thing. It's, it's a fair game for all of us, guys. I got people that write me that are 40, 50, going back to barber school and saying, I hope I'm not too late. Listen, you come out, you put the effort in, you make clients feel good and that you care about them, and that you're passionate about what you do, you guys will have no problem. And that's gonna just grow no matter what age you are. Every year that I go on, the more work I put in, the more I get out. So that's what I tell you guys, just put the work in, you can take it wherever you wanna go. That's what I tell every person that writes me that kind of question. Listen, I'm just putting work in, I'm making connections, I'm sending emails, I'm leaving comments, I'm asking questions, and that's how I've gotten where I've gotten. So you guys can take it as far as you want. Like I said, you only get out what you put in. All right guys, that was the last question. Perfect timing, my dinner just showed up. But guys, I appreciate all you guys watching my videos. I'll be honest guys, I was discouraged. I had a headache all day, I felt terrible. Uh, I took a nap to try to sleep off my headache. I get migraines real bad. So I woke up, I was feeling a little bit better and I got a message from somebody that said that my content had helped them decide to turn their life around, focus on barbering, throw away the old life they had had. I'm not sure what they meant, but that, that watching my videos had helped inspire them to go after cutting hair and make a better life for themselves. And he just encouraged me to keep putting content out. And I'll tell you guys, I was feeling so bad. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break until I go back to work. I'm not gonna do any more videos. And man, that, that came right on time. So guys, here's the video. I got right back up. All of a sudden I started feeling better. And uh, here's a video for you guys. I wanted to keep it putting out. And I'll tell you guys, I'm gonna keep going all the way up until I get back to cutting hair. And then I'm gonna have some, definitely some high quality coming for you guys. I can't wait to cut hair. But anyways, guys, leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Guys, you already know, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We're almost at 3,000. And hit that bell up top and turn on the notifications so you guys get notified every time I drop a video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you click this link right here. If you want to check out some more content from me, check out this video right here. Appreciate it.